So I just showed up in Chicago. I'm doing a project with my homeboy, Mike, the Modustrial Maker, and we are here now. Mike, let me in. There he is, my dude. Yes. We just got here. I have no idea what we're even gonna build. Why don't you take us around and maybe we'll figure out something that you actually need for this place. Go upstairs. Welcome to uh, Casa Industrial. This place looks great, man. If Darth Vader cooked, this would be his kitchen. And you have these huge steel beams on the ceiling. What if we did like a kitchen swing? We just get a piece of wood. Right in the middle where everyone walks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or if we did it on the other side, you could swing and cook at the same time. What do you think about building a mirror? You don't have a mirror. You've got that uh, industrial, what do they call that? Like post-apocalyptic industrial. Uh, that light's cool, you should leave that. Mirror's a good idea, but maybe better for your channel. Dude, this bathroom is, it's nice, but I feel like it's, you know, missing something. Maybe like a piece of art on this wall that inspires you whenever you're uh, doing your business. That's a shitty idea. We got all the bad ideas out of the way. I think the best thing and something that you actually need, you were talking about needing another bookcase for all your books yeah. and your Nat Geos with a cabinet underneath. So why don't we do something long with lots of storage underneath. We'll get some slabs. Um, you'll have book storage up top. And then we've got to go get our materials because right now, we have nothing. Okay, so our first stop is here at Al Hardwood Lumber. We don't even have the piece design, but we're gonna go in there and see if we can't find some slabs and then use that to design the entire piece around. So let's go. Oh, is this a walnut? Yeah. Look at that. That might be freaking perfect. Let's move these. This would be facing this side. I think we want like a little over four feet. No, it's pretty too. It's got some, whatever you call this, some freckling. Three quarters on, and it's in the uh, the longitudinal plane. It's a little on the other side. More wood, surprisingly. Yeah. I'm a slab. Please don't pour epoxy on me. Please. That's a good slab over there. I think your wood it's nice, it's hard, you know, it's long. I think, I think we found what we needed. You got nice wood. Let's go to Bart's and uh, we'll see if we can find you a slab. That was a lot of slabber. <laughs> <laughs> That's the weirdest bald eagle I've ever seen. Right? This is a Polish uh, chicken. All right, well, uh, we just uh, left Bart's a few minutes ago, and we got some drama because a massive thunderstorm just came out of nowhere, and we threw some tarps over the slabs, but... Um, they should be okay. That's the thing with slabs. You really don't have to worry about them getting wet. You don't want them getting, like, submerged, but the slab that Clifford picked out it's been sitting outside for three years. It's gonna be fine, but what it might have to do is add maybe an extra day of drying time before we can start working with it. Okay, uh, let's see. She is right at 59 long. We're gonna use this for the doors on the cabinet, but the rest of the design of the bookshelf and how it's all gonna to come together, no idea. So uh, let's go upstairs and put something together. So just something like this. And I was thinking like slab here. Yeah, and then books, I was thinking on top where you could see them. You've already got this looking very open mm -hmm. and very organized. So carry that element over here and have yeah. the top be very open and organized with all your Nat Geos and then all your books down on the lower cap. So that piece is gonna live on this wall, right? Really yeah, close yeah. to your dining table. And you really want to have it kind of tie into the dining table, which is walnut, like the slab yeah. we got, and it's got a black steel base. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is a black stain plywood cabinet Ooh. with the walnut doors, Okay. all black. We do white epoxy in the river on the doors. I think we do black. So black on black on black. Ooh. Black with the yellow Nat Geos. And I'm gonna start like coming up with a design. I'll come grab you when I have something. Okay. And then you can tell me if you like it or not. Ooh. Once again, I'm jumping into my favorite design software and that's Make By Me, who is sponsoring this video. 
And I've been asked recently, Johnny, why do you get so excited about Make By Me? Why do I see them keep popping up in your videos? And the biggest reason is that it's the best tool that I've found to bring 3D modeling and project design to as large of an audience as possible. You see, I've always believed that for most of us mere mortals, design ability is a muscle that needs to be exercised and fostered regularly. There are those out there for which design comes innately, and I have a name for those folks, artist. The rest of us can develop that skill set, but it comes through putting in the reps. And for me, that's where Make By Me is such an incredible tool. I've never used 3D modeling software that is more intuitive and easy to use as Make By Me. It requires a no 3D modeling background and works in a very linear way in which you bring materials into that design environment and then cut those materials as you would do in real life. The bonus is the software then creates a set of plans as you go and you can export your designs into the Home By Me app, which you can easily set up the layout of your space or a client space. And then you can take that piece that you've designed and see what it looks like within that space. I've got a link for you to check out Make By Me for free down below. And now let's go show Mike that design and see what he thinks. This is what I've come up with. Uh, this is kind of my first draft. Dude, I dig that. Do you like that? Ooh. Armed with the Modustrial seal of approval, I got to work. And this live edge slab is gonna act as the doors of the cabinet, which is the main focus of this build. Using Mike's track saw, which barely has the ability to cut through cardboard, I was almost able to cut this slab in half. Also, I just wanna let you guys know, I'm launching a GoFundMe to help Mike buy some decent tools. He really needs the help. There's a link down below. While I'm figuring out the layout, I have a few straight sawn edges here, and I'm gonna have to carve in a fake live edge, or a live edge, as the pros call it. And after a long day of traveling, designing, going to pick up materials, and working, we called it a night on day one. Hey, Mr. Builds, wake up. It's time to get to work. It's day two. Let's go. So one of the biggest hurdles on a project like this is allowing time for epoxy to fully cure. So day two and I'm already feeling the squeeze. I know that I'm gonna have to pour the epoxy in multiple pours and as cold as it is in Chicago and in Mike's shop, the cure times can get extended by several days. We got right to work building the epoxy form, but then had to make a Home Depot run in the middle of it when we discovered we were missing a few needed items. Okay, we had to make a quick run to Home Depot because I need some uh, stucco tape, which is my favorite kind of tape to use for epoxy pours. And I think I see it right here. Yeah, this stuff right here, the best stuff to use for epoxy pours. God, it's expensive. Let's get two then. Silicone, stucco tape. That's how I make my forms. And then we need some uh, felt pads so they don't scratch up Mike's floor. Not that I care, but he cares. Okay, let's get out of here. This was a brilliant idea on Home Depot's part. Let's stop hiring cashiers and make the customer the cashier. Brilliant move. I don't know why I ever put silicone caulk in a plastic bag because it immediately rips the plastic bag like it's already about to poke through every time. I don't have the heart to hurt you. Hashtag not sponsored. So we come up. So we're gonna do the epoxy pour. I grabbed some of this Total Boat Thick Set. We're a little bit over an inch thick. Yeah, you can pour this up to two inches deep, but on this long and wide of a pour, you gotta be careful. I'm gonna mix it up about a gallon at a time. I'm guessing it'll take two gallons. And then I'm gonna add some black pigment. The uh, hardener on this stuff is like water. This stuff, you really want to take your time. It is a three to one mix ratio, so it takes a little bit longer to mix. So I like to mix for at least five minutes, and that's before I add my pigment. I'm going to try to add it drop by drop so I can kind of keep track of how much I'm adding. So when I do that second pour, I can properly color match. One drop. Ah, ah, ah. 27, 28, 29, 30. You want to make sure, too, as you're mixing, you're looking for any like kind of streaks of color in there. You don't want any of that because that'll show up in your pour itself. Okay, so that epoxy has been curing for, I don't know, maybe 12, 18 hours, somewhere in that range. I can take my finger and push it in, make an indentation, so it's still not fully cured, which means I'll get a good bond between this next layer and the previous layer. 
So Mike has some really, really nice Baltic birch plywood. This stuff is extremely hard to get as anyone who uses it knows. I've never seen Baltic birch plywood this nice. There is not a single patch anywhere on this on either side. I mean, Baltic birch is already expensive, but this stuff I bet was crazy expensive. It's for Mike, so we're gonna use his stuff. Five by five sheets are always awkward to carry. Don't trip, Jeff. Hey, y'all, give a shout out, cameraman Jeff, for uh, risking his life to film dumb shots like this. I'm wearing the uh, proper shop uh, footwear. Switching gears to building that cabinet, and since we only have a week to build this, I'm using Mike's Avid CNC to cut out all the cabinet parts, and Mike has the same CNC I do. At least the work table size of five foot by 10 foot, his spindle is like two horsepower, while mine is 8.7 horsepower, running off a of three phase power. So yeah, if me and Mike were to compare, mine's bigger. Ooh. I needed a workbench to build this cabinet on, and in Mike's shop, workspace is as scarce as well-maintained tools. Also, don't forget, Mike's over there building another project the same time I'm making this cabinet, but thankfully he had this gridlock table. This work table is great because it's super mobile and modular, and it folds up so you can stow it away. Instant workbench. I actually was able to get a gridlock table in my workshop now, and I'm really loving using this thing. If you wanna check it out, I've got a link for the gridlock work table down in the video description. Onto assembling the cabinet, and the CNC has already cut dados and rabbits, and I can now assemble the cabinet like a giant set of Lego. Which, fun fact, Lego is the plural form of Lego. Bet you didn't know that. So Lego on to day four, where we're starting to feel the time crunch. Hey Johnny, come on, it's day four, we're running behind schedule. Oh, just trying to get camera ready. So we're gonna demold this thing. It's been sitting here for about a day and a half. Feels pretty good. Okay, got all the screws out, and I should be able to just pull these right off. I finished cutting and assembling the upper cabinet, and with that out of the way, I can work on the base, which I'm building out of solid maple. Let's take another look at the Make By Me design, and I think it's gonna make a little bit more sense as to how this base comes together. Essentially, it's a frame that matches the width of the cabinet and is inset an inch and a half on the front and the back using inch and a half maple boards that are put together with dominoes and wood glue. The legs then attach to the outer end of the base frame and hold the cabinet up five inches off the ground while continuing that line 12 inches up the side of the cabinet for extra support support and a nice visual detail. Also, I was adding a round over to the legs and got a little bit too aggressive when this happened. Hello darkness, my old friend. Okay, so that is what happens when you try to take too big of a pass at once. I definitely knew that could be a problem, but luckily uh, we got the piece. I can glue this back on, wrap it in blue tape. We'll route it again, and I'll just take multiple passes to get it to um, the round over that we're looking for. If that happens, it's okay, you can fix it, but uh, don't be an idiot like I was. So here I'm gluing the two cabinets together, and you can see where I experimented with adding a carved inlay on top of this cabinet. The inlay was too finely detailed and the plywood kept chipping out. Given that we only had a few days left, I abandoned this idea and hid it in that glue up between the upper and lower cabinets where no one will ever see it. Hey Johnny, it's day six. Let's uh, quit screwing around so we can get some stuff done. I'm practicing. With only a day and a half left to finish this cabinet, I still had a long list of things that needed to get done. Using this Rockler thin rip jig, I made maple edge banding for the front of the cabinet and installed that with these Rockler bandy clamps. The glue had dried on that damaged leg that I repaired earlier, and now I could finish adding that round over. Here you can see it didn't perfectly hide the break, but with a little bit of sanding, you'd have to look really close to be able to tell. I think the legs by themselves would have looked a bit clunky sitting up along the side of the cabinet. So here I cut in a 30 degree bevel at the top of each leg, and I really think that helps ease that transition between the base and the cabinet. Jeff helped me glue the legs on in place, and we put the cabinet on top of the legs and then clamped everything together with this strap clamp. Now this whole time Mike had been using the CNC after we finished cutting out those cabinet parts. So this was our first opportunity to get back on the CNC and flatten that slab on both sides.
back to that edge banding and the glue was dry so I can trim the edges and flush trim the whole cabinet with the router. With time limited, we're dividing and conquering. So Jeff is sanding the walnut slab while I'm working on the cabinet. And now I can apply the finish. And I decided to go with Rubio Monaco, but a way that I've never tried before. I'm staining the cabinet black and Rubio Monaco has a black stain and finish, but it's recommended that you add this black pre-coat dye first. So that's what I'm applying here. I actually applied two layers and sanded in between before applying that Rubio black finish and calling it a night. Last day, we've got like eight hours to get this build done. Before we gotta get on a plane and go back to Oklahoma City, we have so much work left to do. I just hope we can get it done in time. So it's the last day, and after measuring roughly 27 times and then double checking those measurements, I could cut the doors to size. One mistake here would ruin this whole project as we were just hours away from having to get on our flight to go home. So Jeff cut in the recesses for the Euro style hinges that we're using to attach the doors, and he's using the world's dullest Forstner bit in existence. So please, again, consider donating to that GoFundMe and help Mike with some sharp tools in his shop. With the hardware installed, we could put these overlay doors on the cabinet. I held them in place and lined them up while Jeff attached the hardware to the inside of the cabinet and the doors were a perfect fit without needing to do any final trimming. And you could say that this was just luck, but in reality, I'm just that good. I added some shelves while Jeff freehand cut in the recessed door pulls on the backside of the doors. And you could say Jeff is that good, but really he just got lucky. Last, I'm finishing these doors with Total Boat Wood Honey. And throughout this video, you see me use Total Boat and Rockler products. And you all know that they're both longtime sponsors of this channel. I've got links for all those products that I use down below. And when you support my sponsors, you also support my channel. And for that, I thank you. With about two hours to spare until we have to leave for the airport and nothing packed, we got the cabinet upstairs into Mike's loft where it's going to live between the dining area and the living room. I added back panels to the lower cabinet, but the top cabinet was left open to allow the raw brick to show through, which I thought looked really good. But as soon as we left, Mike threw a back panel on it. And after spending a week getting this project done and all the things that we had to go through, I think nothing explains how pleased Jeff and I were more than the actual audio from right after I popped the doors on. Oh, 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 oh. Shit. That is fing sick! It's one of the coolest things we fing made, dude. Bro, that is. One week in Chicago and we were ready to go home. This is a fun build and it was really fun to challenge myself with designing and building an entire piece from scratch in one week. In case you didn't know, I just launched my Patreon where you can get exclusive access, one of a kind merch, and even win a chance for me to build you something while I make a video out of it. So check that out. I've got a link for Patreon down below if you're interested. I've also got merch link below. So grab you a Johnny Builds t-shirt and be the coolest person at your local Ace Hardware. If you enjoyed this video, lightly tap the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for checking this one out and I'll see you back here next time. Oh. Oh. Oh.